We gave so much love into Miss Gracie. Hey, fabulous teachers. I hope that you guys are doing great today. Um, I hope that you guys can hear me okay. Um, so welcome to my webinar. My name is Kara Rickman and I'm the founder of Create Your Balance with Literacy. And um, you guys, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Because I'm not sure if my um, microphone is working. So just give me a thumbs up. If you'll tell me um, where you guys are from and where you, um, where you teach, um, hey Jill, hey Allison, hey Cheryl, thank you so much for watching. Hi Janina, welcome, welcome to my webinar all about cross-curricular fun for March. This webinar is jam-packed full of stuff, so I'm going to talk really fast. Um, so uh, I apologize if I talk really fast, but you guys can always watch this again and rewind it in the Facebook group. You can watch it again if you go to the media section at the top of the Facebook group, you can always watch it again, okay? So just tell me where you're from and where, um, what you teach, what grade. Um, so I know Cheryl's in Ohio. Yay, you guys can hear, that's fabulous. I always get nervous whenever I start because I don't know if my technology skills are <laughs> good enough. So um, yay, I'm so glad you guys can hear me. So let's go ahead and get started, okay? Now, you guys that are showing up live today, in the comments, I already um, I linked a link for you guys a freebie, okay? Because our 120th day is coming up soon, and our 120th day is this Friday, okay? So if you guys go in the comments and click on the link that has the Google Drive link, you can download this for free. So it's a let's count 120 chart that I like to do with my kiddos during math stations for the 120th day. Um, I give them some pinto beans, and so they put the beans on the boxes, and then they count to 120. Or you could have them do different um, kinds of beans or different kinds of pasta. You can have them do wagon wheel pasta. Um, and so I also have 120th day stars that you can um, copy on yellow cardstock, and then you can have them, uh, you can cut them out, and then you can clip them on, pin them on the kids' shirts for their uh, little pins for the day, for 120th day. And then I have a little sign-up sheet that um, it says we're lassoing away on 120th day. Um, so you can send home to the parents if you wish, or you can um, tweak it if you want. So this this is free for you guys. I know that a lot of you guys te teach in Texas um, that are watching today. I know that um, 120th day is coming up soon for a lot of us. So this is for you guys um, that you're showing up live. So enjoy, okay? All right, so exciting news. This is a webinar series. Each month I will be giving a new webinar of a preview of the following month. So if you enjoyed this webinar and you get a lot of great ideas, stay tuned for the end of March because I'm gonna be giving a new one on April, okay? So that one is gonna be all about Patricia Polacco author study, Easter, Earth Day, Endangered Animals, Rainforests, Life Cycles, Plants, and Insects. 
So as everybody, every all, all the other webinars I've given that's jam-packed full of fun. So hopefully, hopefully you guys can join me for that one. It's probably going to be the end of March. Okay, so today, if you're commenting, you could win one of these free resources. Now, these are all of my TPT store, but I will send it to you if you win. I will send it to you uh, via Facebook Messenger at the end of the webinar. So if I call your name today, then you can decide which one of these you would like. So let me go through each of these real quick so you know. So this one is called Texas Animals Research and Writing. So if you're a Texas teacher and you want to do research on all the Texas animals, the the butterfly of Texas, the small animal, the small mammal of Texas, the fish of Texas, the reptile of Texas, all those different animals, then you can make lap books and all of the research papers can get stapled inside the lap books. I'm going to show you a slide that looks um, that shares with what it looks like later. So you could win that. That one's really fun. Or you can win the Let's Write About Texas Symbols. Again, if you're a Texas teacher and you want to have your kids research a Texas symbol, the, uh, the Texas flag, the Alamo, the Mockingbird, the Butterfly, and then they make a topper at, um, on top of their story, and then you can staple it together. These look super cute in your hallway. Okay? Super cute. So hi, Trevor. Hi, Debbie. So glad you're watching. Um, or if you win, you could win How to Catch a Leprechaun. So I know St. Patrick's Day is coming up soon. Um, I don't know if you guys are in school during St. Patrick's Day or you might have spring break during St. Patrick's Day. So if you want to do St. Patrick's Day things, you might want to do it before spring break or you or do it after when you get back. Um, so this one is How to Catch a Leprechaun. I have a lot of different templates in this one. Um, a lot, I have a list of all the different leprechaun stories that you could read. Um, and then they got, they has, there's the different writing templates, there's different toppers, there's girl and boy leprechauns, so you can choose. Um, and then the bottom one is Let's Write About St. Patrick's Day. This one has all the leprechauns plus a pot of gold for money. If you're teaching money right now, you can have the kids make a pot of gold or you can have them make a rainbow with those dot stickers. You know those little sheets with the dot colored dot stickers? You could have them make a rainbow out of those dot stickers, and it turns out so cute. So um, if I call your name today, you can choose one of these um, resources to um, win for your classroom. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pick um, our first winner today. Let's see. How about Allison Sutton? Allison Sutton. Hey, Allison, you're my first winner. I know some of you um, probably have won some of these before, but um, you get a lot of choices. So that's great. Yay, Allison. You can let me know in the comments which one you would like. So if you love what I'm sharing with you today and you want more, stay tuned to the end because you could have a chance to join my Cross Curricular Connections membership subscription where all of your lesson plans and resources are already made and prepped for you so you can take back your weekends, okay? So everything I'm sharing with you today is all in the membership, plus exclusive lesson plans, which I'll share with you at the very, very end. Oh, yay, Allison wants Texas symbols, awesome. Oh, Tamara teaches in Indiana, yay, that's great. I was in Indiana and in Indianapolis um, one time in my life. <laughs> Um, so that was really a fun trip. So this is what I'm going to be doing for March. Now you guys don't have to do all of these things, but if you, um, have the time, here's some choices. Okay. If you have the time, I know everybody's pressed for time. Um, you have curriculum you have to teach. Luckily, a lot of this goes with your standards and your teaks. If you're teaching Texas, um, your scope and sequence. Okay. So, um, we, in March, you, we have spring break. So then we only have like three weeks left of March. And so I try to squeeze in as much as I can. So I do Texas symbols. I do, of course, 120th day, which is one day. Um, I do Texas animal research. I do, a, I read a lot of Gail Gibbons books. Um, we do a lot, some farm activities that go along with Texas. We do St. Patrick's Day. Um, we do some reader's theater. We do some procedural writing. 
And of course, we have Dr. Seuss Week with uh, March Madness. So these are some things that you can choose from. Please don't think that you have to do all of these. It's just completely up to you. Okay. And you already have some, if you have some ideas you want to share, please do in the comments. I would love to learn some new things from you guys too. So this is how I organize my mentor text. Um, if you notice at the bottom, I have all of my Texas books right here in this um, book stand. So in my library, or actually in my author center, I have a space where I um, uh, display all of my thematic books for the month, okay? So I switch those out for my author study. Um, and then in the back of my room, I have these cubbies full of these um, thematic books. And so I have these um, teal baskets that I got from Walmart. And I have labels on the front of them, and I have them labeled with all my thematic units. So now I'm going to be teaching about Texas. So I just take out the um, the bat, the bucket that I need, and I pull out the books that I need. I put some in my library, some in my author center, some in my theme center, and then I just get out what I need, um, and it's all right there. I don't have to go hunting for all the books that I need. So it's really easy. These buckets are from Walmart, um, or you could get them on Amazon also. They're 12 gallon buckets. Um, and they come in all colors, okay? All colors, black, red, blue, yellow, white, all colors. So you could color code your classroom if you wanted to. And then I organize my writer's workshop, reader's workshop, and um, math workshop down here in these clear plastic t uh, bins from Walmart. And so I, ha I have these hanging dividers. And so I, I divide the books into skills. And so for writer's workshop, I might have, I have nouns, verbs, adjectives, onomatopoeia, prepositions, pronouns, and so I can just grab the books that I need out from the, the tub. For math workshop, I might have it by addition, subtraction, um, greater than, less than, place value, measurement, time, geometry. So it's really easy for me to uh, organize my books this way. And then for my units, I like to organize my units inside binders. And so I have cover, a cover page for the binder. And these are in my TPT store. Um, you can click on the picture here and it'll take you straight to the resource if you're interested, um, if you wanna organize this way. So inside the binder, I have um, dividers. Reading, writing, poetry, math, science, and art. Okay, so I put all of my masters inside of the binder. So when I do my team planning, I just take my binder out to the neighborhood when we're planning, and then I pull out the masters that I need. It's really easy. And so they all are in the same the same binder. I don't have to go hunting for them. I don't I don't use the manila folders to put my uh, my resources in because that they get lost really easily and they fall out. And so I like using the binder system because they stay intact. Okay. So if you have a really good idea of how you organize your units, share with us how you organize your units, okay? I would love to hear. Um, this is my author study for Dr. Seuss. If you choose to do Dr. Seuss for March, um, I have an author study, author center in my classroom where the kids go and they um, look at the author that's on the board and they can choose a couple of books they want to read and then they have a template that they have to fill out. So they have to color, draw a picture of the author, they have to color it. And then they have, after they read the book, they draw the beginning, middle, and end. They write the title, the author, and the genre, okay? So I have an, an author study for Dr. Seuss. And then for Dr. Seuss Week, um, this is what we did last year. Um, I don't have one for this year yet, but I wanted to share this with y'all from last year. So on Monday, we had dress up. We had a dress up week at school. So Monday, we did one fish, two fish, wear something red or blue. On Tuesday, we did the cat in the hat, wear stripes in your favorite hat. On Wednesday, we had Wacky Wednesday, get wacky, wear your clothes backwards, inside out, or mismatched. On Thursday, we had green eggs and ham, wear something green. And then Friday, we had sleep book, and you could wear your pajamas. So um, this was what we did last year. We'll probably do something very similar again this year, so that's really fun. And then this was what um, we we could make for the Cat in the Hat craftivity. Um, you can take a circle. They can, the kids can make a circle, trace a circle around a plate, a paper plate. Or if you just want to use a plastic round paper plate and have them make the face on the plate, that's easy. You don't They don't have to trace anything. And then they glue it on a background. Um, you can trace the hat. You can make stripes. You can make the little, uh, vis the little whiskers. 
Um, and then if you want them to write some rhyming words that are in the story from Cat in the Hat, you can have them write rhyming words around the project. So there's a lot of fun things you can do with Cat in the Hat. What I usually do um, is I go for Gail Gibbons because Gail Gibbons um, books go along with my thematic units. So for example, she has a book on farming, she has horses, she has chicks and chickens, monarch butterflies, pigs, uh, cowboys and cowgirls, the milkmakers, and St. Patrick's Day. So I like using her in March because her books go so well with my thematic units. Um, and so, I like having her in my author center as well. These are the lap books I was telling you guys about um, before um, when we gave away the first resource to the first winner. This was the first one. And so um, the lap books are just colored manila folders, okay? So if you go to Walmart and you go to the manila folders section, the folder section in a box, there are these colored folders and I have the kids pick out what color they want to there's red there's blue there's yellow and then they um, decorate the cover with their animal their Texas animal so whatever animal they're researching then they get to decorate the cover and then on the inside we open it up and all the research templates get stapled inside of the lap book okay so it's really really fun and so you can just keep adding to um, the lap book over and over again and then you can staple these on your bulletin board so the parents that come by they can open up the lap book and they can see all their research papers this is a really great uh, a really great alternative to like the 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 poster board or the the try the try poster board that you the science board that you guys have used before so this is just something different i loved using lap books because they're fun, they're different, they're engaging, the kids love them. So that's what I use for Gail Gibbons. And then um, these are some of the templates that you can staple inside the lap book. So I have all about chickens, I have all about monarch butterflies, um, and so they they can write butterflies can, have, and are. They can make, a, they label the parts of the butterfly, they can make the chicken life cycle. Um, so they can staple all of these inside. So these are in my, in my TPT store. Um, you can click on the pictures afterwards. I'm going to upload this into the Facebook group and you can click on any of the links. Any of the pictures will take you straight to the resource. Okay. So going on to Texas. Now I know that some of you don't teach in Texas, so just bear with me. Um, but some of these books might actually, you could still actually use, even though you don't teach in Texas. Um, so you could read uh, The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush, The Legend of the Blue Bonnet. You could read Armadillo Rodeo, um, T is for Texas, The Lonesome Star, Blue Bonnet at the Alamo, Hello Texas, and L is for Lone Star, T is for Texas. There's tons and tons of Texas books. Oh my gosh, I get so overwhelmed looking at all my Texas books because... I have trouble like narrowing them down. Like, which ones am I going to use? I don't. I don't know which ones. They're they're all so good. So, I have to like pick and choose each year. And then this is my theme center. So, whatever state that you're in, if you want to do a theme all about your state, Mississippi, Virginia, Indiana, Florida, go for it. You know the kids need to learn their history about their state, and you probably have state standards that say um, they have to learn the the state flag, the state symbols. Um, so this is a great idea for a theme center. So what I did was I made these Texas symbol posters and I put them around on the bulletin board. And then I have um, these games and I have puzzles. I have puppets. I have an Alamo that I can play with with soldiers. Um, and then I tell them on the top shelf, all the glass things that are on the top shelf, I don't want them to touch the top shelf. I just want them to look at it. Okay. I'm very picky about that because I want, I tell them I have to save my things for 10 years. And they're like, what, 10 years? Why do you have to save these for 10 years? And I tell them that's how much longer Miss Rickman has to teach. So I have to keep these things really safe and they have to make them look good for 10 more years. I really, I'm not teaching 10 more years, probably seven, but they don't know that. Um, so anyway, this is my theme center and I, I flip flop between science and social studies. Okay, so in March, I'm going to be doing the whole month of March with Texas since we have spring break in the middle and I don't have as many weeks. So um, then after after Texas, I'm going to flip flop back to science. Um, and so usually I do two weeks on and two weeks off, which is really good for me because I like to teach cross curricular. 
And I really think that the kids, they make better connections if you teach cross-curricular, okay? Um, and so if you can do social studies in reading or you can do science in writing, um, the more that you can cross-curricular your, your curriculum, uh, that's awesome, okay? So I have so many great things planned for, for the, my kids for Texas. There's so much fun. So these are some things I'm going to do. Um, we're going to make a map of Texas. We're going to make, we're going to label the major cities and we're going to make the rivers. Now, when we make the rivers, we use yarn and it's, it's kind of tricky, but um, what you can do is you can already have the lines drawn on the state where your rivers are and then have them glue the yarn on top of the lines so they don't have to recreate the rivers where they go because that can get a little bit messy can get a little bit frustrating for them because they don't know exactly where the rivers go. So I already have the lines drawn and then they just glue the yarn on top. So then we uh, label the capital with a big star sticker, which is Austin. Um, and we label all the major cities. Um, we also do Armadillo Rodeo. And um, this is a dollar deal today. I sent this out in my newsletter this morning. So if you're interested in Armadillo Rodeo, it is a dollar deal in my store. So um, I use the macaroni <laughs> on the top here for the for the armadillo. So you can make the armadillo on the top. You can glue the macaroni on the top here. And then they're gonna write a story about the armadillo rodeo. You can have them do first, then next, and last. Or you could write, have them write a story all about armadillos or all about the rodeo or an adventure of an um, armadillo at the rodeo, whatever you want them to do. And then you can have them do the legend of the Indian paintbrush. So we did the beginning, middle, and end, and we wrote sentences for um, the beginning, middle, and end. Same with the legend of the the blue bonnet. Okay, so we do the picture on one side and we do the writing on the other side. Hi May. Hi Jana. Oh, thank you, Gina. That was really fun with the yarn. Yes, um, but just make sure that you <laughs> draw the lines for the rivers. Um, so, and also in Texas, we have the Alamo. We're called the, Al San Antonio is the Alamo city. So we make a big deal about the Alamo. That's one of our standards. We have to teach about the Alamo. And so we make an Alamo with beans. Um, and so they glue the Alamo template onto a background. And then we take different colored beans and then we make a pattern around the Alamo. And so then they write a story about the Alamo. So, and I, I go into a lot of detail about the, the heroes, the Battle of the Alamo, the heroes, the 13 Days of Glory, because they need to know all that history. Um, so they, they are aware of how we got Texas independence. Um, or you could have them do um, a cowboy story. If you want to do something fiction, which is really fun, you can have them write about a cowboy story or how to be a cowboy. And then you could have them watercolor. They love watercolors. Oh my gosh have them watercolor a sunset and then they can make a windmill and cowboys or horses with black construction paper like a silhouette against the sunset which is so beautiful and then they can write their story about it so just some really fun art things that you can do with your class for Texas and then um, we have some interactive notebooks that we do we talk about Sam Houston Sam Houston was the general um, during the Texas Revolution. And so we write facts about Sam Houston. We, um, we make chili, which is really fun. So this coming Friday, we have 120th day. In the afternoon, well, our stations are in the morning, which I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But in the afternoon, we're going to make chili. So what I do is I take my crock pot. I get those big cans of Wolf brand chili, about four cans. I dump them in the crock pot and I cut up some hot dogs to put in there and then I put it on low for like an hour and and then we eat it with Frito chips or we can eat them with Texas chips. H-E-B has Texas chips y'all. Okay if you don't know that. <laughs> so cute. So you can use Texas chips or you can make a Frito pie and then they can um, eat their chili and then we watch a movie like we've watched Spirit before in the afternoon and they're eating their chili. So Whatever you want to want to do for 120th day, that's what we do for the afternoon. Because some of the kids they um, they want a special treat on Friday. They we do Fahrenheit Friday, and so that's going to be my Fahrenheit Friday. We're going to make chili together, and I'm going to show them how to make chili. So it's going to be really fun. 
Um, so that you can have them um, write about what their chili tastes like and write adjectives about it. Or, um, and also like how to make chili. I have a template for that I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, here's the Armadillo Rodeo, beginning, middle, and end. Here is Texas Natural Resources. You could do natural resources of your state. Um, we have oil, pecan tree, um, hay, wheat, and then of course cattle. So you could do a whole lesson on natural resources. Um, and then this is my Texas Symbols Research Book. So um, every day during social studies, we do one day for each symbol, okay? And we have a table of contents. And so we treat this as a nonfiction story that we are creating, okay? So we're making a table of contents of all the different symbols. They color the cover and each day we do a different symbol. So first day would be Texas. We'll talk about the history of Texas. The next day might be the Texas flag. We say the Texas pledge. Um, the third day will be the blue bonnet and then the mockingbird and then the pecan tree and then Sam Houston um, and then the Alamo. So we, we take the time and I do about two or three weeks worth of Texas symbols. And at the end, um, we, re we do an about the author page and we do my favorite Texas symbol. So then they have to think about their favorite one that we learned and then they're going to draw a picture and write about it. Oh, do you need a Susanna of the Alamo is a very good book. Yes, I have that book too. I'm, I read that book a lot to my students. Yes, it's a very good book. So that's what we do for Texas Symbols. And then on Fridays, we have, I do what's called Fahrenheit Friday. And then Fahrenheit Friday is my day to do a science investigation. And so we do an oil experiment because oil is one of our natural resources. And so we... Um, predict what's going to happen when oil is added to water. Is the oil going to sink or float? Um, and so they're going to predict, and they always say that oil is going to sink, always. <laughs> so I read them a story um, about oil, about oil spills. And we talk about how oil, you know, floats on top of the water. Um, so then we do the experiment and then they do see, it's fun to see the oil separating from the water and how it comes to the top. It's really, really cool. And so then they draw before and after on inside their jar. You can see the jar right here. And then you can see that the oil was added. And then I always have them label. They have to label the parts of their science experiment. Um, or you could have them do this uh, page where it says you can observe three jars of liquid. What do you think is inside of these jars? You could have a jar of crude oil, vegetable oil, um, and then just regular, regular or car oil. Um, and you could ask them, what are these three things? What do you think they are? They'll say water, juice, whatever, dirt. <laughs> um, and so you could talk about the different types of oil and how we use oil every single day in our lives. And then um, they can answer the questions. Um, what's going to happen? They're going to predict what's going to happen when the oil is added to the water. Um, observe the separating of the oil and water. Which one's on the top? Which one's on the bottom? And then they're going to draw a picture of it at the bottom. Okay. So um, then we go on to Texas animals. So I have a lot of great mentor texts that I like to read. Gail Gibbons has monarch butterflies. There's amazing armadillos. There's horned lizards. There's batty about Texas, birds of Texas, Zeke, Texas Zeke and the longhorn, frog or toad, bass fishing. Um, and so these are all the different kinds of animals of Texas. And again, here's my lap books. Aren't they beautiful? They are just, I just love them. I just love lap books. That's like one, my fetish. I love it. Um, the kids love making them too. So if you have never made one, maybe you, maybe you can make one sometime. So um, the butterfly, the mockingbird, the longhorn, the Texas toad, the Mexican free-tailed bat, the armadillo, the Guadalupe bass, and the horned lizard. Okay. So those are all in that resource. If you win today and I call your name, this is all, these are all of the ones in the resource that you can get um, for free if you win. And then these are some of the um, templates that are inside of the resource. If this is my animal research project, they're going to uh, color a picture of the animal and its habitat here in the circle. They're going to answer these questions. What is its diet? What is its habitat? What state does it live in? This animal has fur, feathers, scales, wings. This animal is a reptile, mammal, bird, or fish. How long can it live? Who are its predators? Okay, and then over here we have longhorns can have an R, and I have these for all the animals, okay? These are just examples. Then they're going to do writing about their animal. 
Here's a fat, fun facts about the animal. So if you don't have a book about the animal and you want them to read something, I have a page for each animal that has fun facts. And then they can label the parts of the animal. Then over here I have the life cycles. So I have all the pictures of the life cycles. Then I have what's our, what are mammals, birds, insects, reptiles, fish, all the different types of animal cards there. So this is a lot of really good stuff. If you wanna, I do this in reading time. So I can do my Texas symbols during social studies time in the afternoon. So in reading time, this is what we do for Texas animals. Okay, so moving on to St. Patrick's Day. So March the 17th. Um, so again, Gail Gibbons has St. Patrick's Day. Um, there, let's see, there's 10 lucky leprechauns. There's how to catch a leprechaun, clever Tom and the leprechaun, um, the luckiest St. Patrick's Day ever, St. Patrick's Day in the morning. And I try really hard to talk in an Irish accent whenever I read these books. <laughs> My Irish accent is terrible. But I try really hard, and they love it. They really do. Um, Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato, and Pete the Cat, the Great Leprechaun Chase. And then, of course, they love, there was an old lady who swallowed a clover. They love the old lady books. I have all the old lady books that have ever been printed. I love them. And I read them during math time. So they can write, they can make pictures on their whiteboard about the different sequencing of the story. And then they can write about how many things she swallowed. Um, were they increasing or decreasing? So we talk about math with that book. So just some really good ideas. Um, so this is the How to Catch a Leprechaun. Um, we, I always have my kids brainstorm when they turn and tell each other. So um, let me give you a little synopsis of my turn and tell. After I read a story or before I read a story, sometimes I connect um, earlier information, like past information, I connect that information to my new lesson. Um, so I always say, hey, remember last week we talked about ya da 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 Well, today we're going to use that information and help us learn some new information. So we always connect old to new. And I feel like they um, they really get, they get hooked in because they already kind of know what's going to be coming up because they already know what I'm going to what I'm going to say. Um, and so I'll have them turn and tell and I have them sit knee to knee, eye to eye. OK, and so I have them take turns and I, ha I have them say hello, neighbor. And then they start talking and they take turns. I always give them a sentence stem. OK, so if they are going to talk about how to catch a leprechaun, this is my point here how to catch a leprechaun, I would have them say, I would catch a leprechaun first, then next and last, okay? Now you can do it however order you want to, but that's just what I do. But I always give them a sentence starter because I feel like some kids will not elaborate. Some kids will only say one word. And so this helps them create their complete sentences. So then when they are going to write their story, they already have those sentences in their head because they said that they told their partner what they said. So they already have an idea of what they're going to write. And I tell them they have to have five or more words when they're writing a story. Okay. First, I made a trap for the leprechaun. Okay. That's eight words. So I need to put down eight words on my blanks or I need to draw eight blanks for my words. So I think having the kids turn and tell, especially if they are ESL kids or ELL kids that they don't speak English very well, this is great because they get to hear what the other kids are saying. They get to, they get to have a chance to not feel embarrassed because they can't speak as well as their pals do. Um, and so then after they turn and tell, I'll have them repeat something that their partner said. So they really have to listen. They have to listen to what their partner said because then they're going to say, my partner said blah, 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 blah. Okay. So it's really interesting to hear what they say. And sometimes they have no clue because they weren't listening to their partner. They were just looking around the room. And I can tell, already tell who is not listening and who is. Um, so then that's just what I do for um, how I turn and tell. But I think that's really important to do with reluctant writers or reluctant readers, anybody who is reluctant to speak or communicate or listen, this is a really good, quick, simple strategy that you can use 
you know, at any time of the day. You can use it with any subject. That's what's so great about it. So these are the these are the products that are in my Let's Write About St. Patrick's Day resource. Okay, so if you win today, then you can um, you can select that one if you want. And then here's some um, interactive notebooks for March that I have them do. Um, this is what I do for my interactive notebooks. And so on this side right here, I have them put the the anchor chart or the skill card on one side, and then on the on the other side is their work that they do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so you can do it like this if you want to, or you can just not have them do the anchor chart at all. If you have space on your walls to put up all your anchor charts, which I don't, I have them glue their anchor charts in their notebook, but not all the time. Just whenever, not every day, just once a week, whenever we learn something new, a new skill. So they have something to look back to because I don't have space on my walls, okay? So I leave my anchor charts up for the week and then I'd switch them to the next week on my big book stand. Um, and so I glue, I use them, I shrink them down, take a picture of them and I shrink them down and then we glue them in our notebooks. And so these are some of the sequence of events pages, the inferencing pages, and then the how to catch a leprechaun page. Okay, so now we're gonna go move on to folk tales. Um, so this is this is going into Reader's Theater. So if you are doing Reader's Theater in March, you can read. I always have I always have a book to read for them to get acquainted with the story before I have them practice it. So they know exactly what the story is about because I want them to hear my inflection, my tone, my fluency, my expression of the story. Um, and so I like to make the different voices of the animals, especially like Little Red Hen. I love making the different voices. So when they're doing the Little Red Hen and they're speaking, they understand, oh, I need to sound, I need to sound lazy or I need to sound frustrated. Okay, so I always read the story before we do the play. So these are some hats that I, I made for my uh, different plays. These are my daughters, Kennedy and Presley. And so <laughs> they were on my models for the day. Um, and so these are the different hats that you could make for your students. So every Reader's Theater play that I've written, I have all the hats, I have all the puppets for, and I have the scripts, okay? So I have Little Red Hen, um, I have Goldilocks and the Three Bears, um, the Three Little Pigs, the Gingerbread Boy, li uh, Little Red Riding Hood, Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, and so these are the puppets. If you want to have them make a puppet to hold instead of a hat, you can do that too. Or you can have them do both. You know, it's, it's fine. Um, so again, click on the picture here. And this is actually a bundle of all the point of all the readers theater together but you can always click on which one you want to see and buy them separately so it's up to you but they're really really fun readers theater and i have them this is what i do at my small group okay so i read the i read the story whole group we sit on the carpet we read the story together we do comprehension things with the story and then in my small group time that's when I'll pull them and we'll do the play and we'll practice the play together. I have them highlight their lines with a highlighter. I have them practice their lines and then we practice together, practice with our hats, practice with our puppets, whatever you want them to do, okay? So um, that's what I do for Reader's Theater in a nutshell. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick a second winner. Okay, I'm gonna pick May Provido Sojourney. Sojourn? May? Congratulations, May. You're my second winner. Okay, so, so far I have Allison and May who are my winners. So, um, May, if you'll just comment in the comments which one you'd like. There's four different options. There's Let's Write About Texas Symbols. There's um, How to Catch a Leprechaun. There's Let's Write About St. Patrick's Day. And the Animal, Texas Animals, okay? So this is, so you can just comment in the comments um, whenever you get a chance. If not, then I'll ask you after the webinar is over. So this, these are procedural texts for, these are texts for procedural writing. Okay, so I know that a lot of um, school districts have your writing scope and sequence right now. You're doing procedural writing. 
Um, and then after March is over, then we get into persuasive writing. So um, these are some really, really great books that I read that go, that segue into procedural writing. So if you want to have your kids make s'mores, you can read One, Two, Three, Make a S'more with me. Or you can have them read The Giant Jam Sandwich. Or Let's Fly Kite. How to Catch a Leprechaun. The Little Red Hen Makes a Pizza. Or Armadillo Chili. Okay, so these are some great mentor texts. And these are the writing craftivities that I have to go along with all of those books. And again, this is a bundle. Okay, so you want to click on the pictures and click on the picture. It'll take you to the bundle. But each one is separated inside the bundle. So you can click on them separately. Okay, if you want to look at them separately, which is fine. Um, so I have How to Fly a Kite. I have How to Read a Book. How to make a jelly peanut butter and jelly sandwich. How to make chili, which is fun, with armadillo chili. I love that story. Um, how to make s'mores and how to make a pizza. Okay? So these are really fun craftivities that you can do. Um, I'm going to go back to um, armadillo, armadillo chili. If you haven't gotten that book or if you have don't know that story, it is so cute and it's... Um, it goes along with the little red hen because you know how the little red hen has, she bakes bread and the others don't want to help her. Well, Billy is the armadillo and she's making chili and her friends want to come eat the chili, but she wants them to help her, but they, they tell her no. So then she shoes them away, but then at the end, they all come back. She gets really lonely and so they all come back with a present. And they bring her something to go with the chili. And so it's just a really sweet book. And it goes perfect with Texas. Perfect. So I'm going to read that on Friday when we make chili. All right. So um, we are going to go into rainbows. Because you know how St. Patrick's Day, leprechauns, they have their pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So here are the rainbow books I like to read. Um, rainbow Stew, Light Makes a Rainbow, Planting a Rainbow, a rainbow of my own. What makes a rainbow? How do you make a rainbow when you see a rainbow and the rainbow in you? So I love making these rainbows. These are super cute. If you want to teach your kids how all different colors of the rainbow, you can have them make the strips. Um, just cut strips with your paper cutter. Just cut the strips of paper that you need. And then you could give them a cloud. They're going to decorate the cloud with their name. And then they, you can just staple the strips underneath the cloud. It's super easy. Um, this is actually a bulletin board that I did at the very beginning of school about 15 years ago. Um, and so I had a whole rainbow theme in my, my classroom. Now I have a farmhouse theme. But before I had farmhouse, I had rainbows. <laughs> and so my... Um, all of the stories that I read at the beginning of the school year were all about rainbows. And so we made a rainbow and we actually did adjectives that described ourselves. And so what they did was they cut different words out to glue on the strips of the colors so they could write, they could glue musical, creative, talented, friendly, athletic, funny, and then they could describe themselves um, using those adjectives. And then I hung them in the hallway and I got some of that um, cloud paper, that fadeless cloud paper, which is awesome. It never fades. And so I made a bulletin board and I put the, the rainbows on there. It looks so cute. So cute. And then I had let your true colors shine. So this, this was my, uh, back to school bulletin board when I had parent night and the parents loved it. The kids loved it. So, and it looked super cute in the hallway. So rainbows is really fun to do. Um, another thing you could do with rainbows um, if you have a prism and you have a flashlight, you can have the kids make a rainbow on the ceiling with a flashlight and a prism. So turn off your lights in your classroom, have them hold up the prism and, and shine the flashlight through the prism and it makes a rainbow on the ceiling. It is so easy, so fun. The kids love that. And then they can draw a picture of a rainbow in their science journal. They can write about the what made the rainbow, what three things make a rainbow. Well, you need rain, you need sunshine, and you need your eyes. So those three things to make a rainbow. Super fun and really fast. Okay, so moving on to farm. So um, again, uh, Gail Gibbons has a farming story. 
Who took the farmer's hat? I love that story. I love it. Click, clack, clue. Click, clack, moo, clouds that... Can't speak. Click, clack, moo, cows that type. Is really fun. Big red barn. Oh, I love big red barn. Um, Mrs. Wishy Washy's farm. The bootmaker and the elves. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. And then farm animals. These are so fun to read if you want to do a farm unit. Okay? I know if you're a kindergarten teacher, I know that kindergarten teachers like to do farm units. So th this is my farm craftivity that is in the Big Red Barn resource. So you could have them do a sequencing foldable. So sequencing foldables um, are so easy to make. You just take a big piece of construction paper, you fold it hot dog style, and then you cut four slits in the front. That's it, okay? And then all of these templates are in the resource. You give, it, give them a day, one day to color them, and then the next day they cut them out and they glue them on. Okay, so this one takes two days, okay? So inside the foldable, they can put the sequence of the story. They can draw their own pictures. So I have blank squares for them to draw. If you want them to create their own, that is fine. I also have sentences already written out for them to match the pictures with, or they can write their own sentences to um, sequence their story. So I know some of you that are commenting, um, today, I know you, you guys have used this before. You've made some foldables before with your class. And um, I know that you've used them many times. And so I hope that, I hope in the future that you continue to use them because they're so fun and they, they look so cute in your hallway. Um, you could write about how to have a farm if you want to do that. Or if I were a cow, they could write about if they were a cow or if they were a pig or a horse or a cat or whatever animal lives on a farm. That is so fun. Here's some interactive notebooks for the farm for Big Red Barn. Um, they could do an acrostic poem of the barn. Um, oh, Shannon says, my first graders love crafting. So many great ideas for these stories. Oh, yay, that's awesome. I think the littles, they still need to do those fun things, right? They still need to cut and paste. They still need to do the artwork, you know, you got to make it fun because it's not all about testing. I know that we have testing so much right now, but as much as you can squeeze in those fun crafts and projects, oh, they just love that. And then when they get into older grades, they miss that. I mean, I know my girls did when they get, when they got into fourth and fifth grade, why can't we do artwork anymore? <laughs> um, but um, they still do artwork, which is just a little bit different artwork <laughs> than first year kindergarten, first grade. So, um, oh, good, Jill. Your students love the foldables. I'm so glad. That's awesome. So these are some interactive notebooks. You can do story elements. You can do sequence of events. And you could have them do um, barn counting 10 frames. If you want to add some math in here, um, you could have them draw the picture of the different ways to make five. Inside of the barn, it says five. And then they can write the number sentences that match each 10 frame. Okay, so moving on to 120th day celebration. So like I said, ours is on Friday. Um, can y'all comment and tell me if you are doing 120th day activities with your class? Um, and maybe tell me what day you're doing it on. Ours is on March the 1st. So here's what we do. We um, send out a sign up genius and we have parents come and we help and, and have us and help us with our stations because we have 12 stations and we have a big neighborhood. And so um, we divide their na our neighborhood, six stations on one side and six on the other side. And so the parents are in charge of running the stations. We couldn't do this without parents. We have to have parents and the parents love it because they get to come to school and they get to help out and they get to see their kid. Um, and so um, we have like cup stacking. So we have 120th, 120 cup stacking station. We have 120 trail mix. We have 120 horse race. Um, we have 120 reasons why we love our school. Okay. So with the trail mix, we set up a table here and we have, that one needs about two or three parents because the kids come by and they will count out 10 of each um, ingredient. They need 10 of each. So we have 12 different ingredients. So like Cheez-Its, Cheerios, M&Ms, gummy bears, chocolate chips, butterscotch chips, white chocolate chips. I mean, all pretzels, all different kinds of things. And so they're going to count out 10 of each thing. 
so they have 120. So the parents are in charge of putting, you know, keeping track of all those things. And then they, um, th- I think this was right after we had COVID and they wore the gloves. You can have them wear the plastic gloves when they, um, so they can, they don't spread germs in the food. Or you could have the parents count out the ingredients and they put the ingredients in the bag. So either way is fine. But you need to have a really big space for this. You have to have really long tables because <laughs> it takes a lot of space. For the cup stacking, um, just get some red solo cups, or you can use the little bitty bathroom cups, which we switched over to the small bathroom cups because these guys were so loud and so noisy when they toppled over. It was so loud. So we decided to go to the little bathroom cups. That way we could have them on a counter instead of on the floor. So it, it really made it easier with the little bathroom cups. So just FYI if you want to do that. Um, also, you could do 120 reasons why we love our school. You can give them a heart. And so they write on their heart why they love their school. And then you can make a bulletin board of all the hearts. Very easy. Um, the race to 120, you can have the kids in pairs. You can have them roll a dice. And then they um, they have these little plastic horses. And then they go however many spaces to get to see who gets to 120 first. Okay. So that's really fun. Okay, and then others we did were, were the 120 necklaces, 120 exercises, 120 a day hats, and building with 120 Lego pieces. So 120 necklaces was with the wagon wheel pasta. We had a string, um, or you could use the fishing line because you want them to be able to string the pasta really easily. So you have the wagon wheel pasta, and then you have the penny pasta, which is the logs. And so we, um, we pretended that the log pasta was the 10, and then we separated each pasta with a wagon wheel. So they had 12 of each one, so it made a pattern, so they could count by 10s all the way to 120. So then they get to wear the necklace, so it's really fun. Um, and then 120 exercises, so they had to do 120 jumping jacks, 120 push-ups, 120 sit-ups, um, 120 hops. I mean, there's, we have a whole list. We have a poster that a parent, um, goes through and she does all of the exercises. And then 120th day hats. We got our hat off of TPT. Um, they can make a hat. So here's the thing though. Um, they already have their cowboy hats on, so they did not have to wear this hat if they didn't want to, but if they did not have a hat on, they could wear this one. Okay. So they could choose. Um, and then 120 pieces, just give them a bunch of Legos and then they make something out of 120 pieces, okay? Super easy. And what we do is we allot about two hours for them to get through the whole stations. And so on their hat, we've we've put um, numbers on their hat before. We put one, numbers one to 12. The parents who are at the stations, they, they mark off the stations that they're at, that they were at because we have them numbered. So they cannot... Um, they cannot go to the same station twice. They have to go through all 12, okay? We even have a timer that we uh, put on the smart board. They have about five, I don't forget how much time, maybe five or 10 minutes for each station. And so when the timer goes off, they have to rotate to the next station, okay? So everything that they make, they always go put on their desk in the classroom and then they come back out to the next station. Even if they're not done, it's okay. So this kind of helps them be accountable for all 12 stations if they have them numbered on their hat. Or we've also done a bracelet. So we put a bracelet around them here, a piece of uh, a strip of construction paper and numbered one to 12. And then the parents hole punch the number that they already at, they were at, or then you can mark them off with a Sharpie. Okay. So just some ideas to keep them accountable for, um, for, you know, their stations, because they will try to go to the same station twice, especially if it's food. No lie. They will. They will try. They will, they will pull the wool over your eyes. And then they'll say, I've already been to all 12 stations. But they really haven't. So this helps them stay accountable. Okay. Um, so this is uh, another St. Patrick's Day math activity that you can do with your kids called Bump. Now, this is super easy game. <laughs> all you need are snap cubes. Okay. So you can teach this game one time at the beginning of the year. 
And all you have to do is switch out the templates for all the different months and switch out the snap cubes. And that's it, okay? Because the game stays the same. So what you do is you have uh, double dice and then one child has 10 snap cubes of one color. The other child has 10 snap cubes of a different color. They roll the dice, they add the two, the two add-ins together. Let's say they, la they land on a 10, they have five plus five. So then they put their snap cube on a 10. If they roll a 10 the next time again, they can stack their snap cube on top of the first one and they're safe. Their partner cannot bump them off. However, if your partner rolls a 10 and you only have one stack, one snap cube, your partner can bump you off and get your cube, okay? And then they take over the 10. And so you can stack however many times you roll a 10, you can make five, you can stack a five. Um, and the free space that you see on here is for 11 and 12, okay? So the, my rule is whoever uses up all of their cubes first wins the game. My kids love this game. They are so competitive. They love bumping each other off. They think it's so great when they get to stack. They think that's the best thing in the world. So I just switched these out with the different months and holidays. That I have these for all the different months. So again, click on the picture. <laughs> It'll take you straight to the resource, okay? Um, so this is addition, subtraction, mats. These are also really fun. Um, so if you notice right here, I have a pot of gold. I use those gold coins, okay? They're gonna create a story problem using the gold coins. Or I have a farm that you can use the plastic animals, okay? If you have plastic animals, you can use them for math, okay? So fun. They can write a number sentence. Then what I, what I have is I have these um, cards that have the problems on them. So you can read them these cards they can create their story problem using their co their coins or their animals, then they can write their number sentence. So for example, um, one of them says, my friend gave me 10 gold coins, I spent five of them, how many gold coins do I have left? Okay, so they can make it, make the problem with their coins. So fun, so, so fun to do for St. Patrick's Day, or if you're doing a Texas unit or a farm unit, then you can use um, the farm mat. So these are, um, I have these for every month and holiday. Again, you can teach this one time. You can have them read the story problem and create it. You just switch out the story problems with the month, switch out the mat with the month, switch out the counters with the month. You can use rainbow erasers for March. You can use leprechaun erasers. You know, go on Amazon and get some erasers, those cute little, little holiday erasers, and you can use those to count with, okay? And then you can use those gold coins, plastic farm animals. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Okay, so, all right, so I'm gonna switch gears a little bit here, um, and so do planning lessons give you night sweats? Okay, so this is, this is how I used to feel, okay? Are you tired of staying late on the evenings and staying up late on the weekends planning for your classroom? How much time do you spend a week on lesson plans? Tell me a comment below and tell me how many minutes you spend on lesson plans a week, okay? And what if I told you that all of your lesson plans, materials, anchor charts, Interactive notebooks were already made for you and all you had to do was print them out. Well, guess what? I've got your back. No more night sweats anymore, okay? Because I know that some teachers really do get night sweats. Have you ever heard of the Sunday scaries? Well, guess what? Those are night sweats. You know, you get you wake up in the middle of the night, you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to do this. And on Sunday nights, you're in a panic, okay? Well, so I have these free cross-curricular lesson plans, and these are brand new. I just finished these, y'all, okay? So these are free. They're all about spring, okay? So some of the lessons that I just showed you are in this cross-curricular lesson plan, okay? So this is on my email list. If you are interested in signing up on my email list, you can get these free free cross-curricular lesson plans. So I have them for reading, writing, science, math, and poetry. Okay, so I'm gonna let you listen to a, here's a sneak peek of what they look like. Hello, fabulous teachers. Are you ready to learn all about spring with your students? How about some free cross-curricular lesson plans that are right at your door? These lesson plans include objectives, suggested measure text, anchor charts, skill cards, interactive notebooks, and writing recipes. For Reader's Workshop, 
The objective is I can identify and write the main idea and details of a story. For a writer's workshop, the objective is I can write a procedural story using first, then, next, and last using Fabricate. For focus poetry, the objective is I can visualize and create a mental image for my poem. For math, the objective is I can count objects in groups of 10 with some left over using place value. For science, the objective is I can describe what weather creates a rainbow. All of this can be yours if you sign up on my email list to get your free lesson plans. Let's take your classroom to the next level. Bye-bye. Okay, so like I said, if you would like these free lesson plans, I'm going to go through um, each one with you um, just really quickly so you know exactly what you're getting. Um, and then I already put the link in the comments. So if you scroll up to the very, very top, um, and if you go to, let's see, let me think, where's the link here? It says Creative Hustler. I'll tell you what, I'll just copy it. I'll just copy it here and I'll um, do it again for y'all. Okay, so um, in the comments, you can go to the, um, li the link that says Creative Hustler. Um, I'll go to the very, very top of the comments and then um, you can sign up on my email list for this. Okay, so um, we're going to read Thunder Cake. So um, we're going to go over main idea. So the first objective for reading is... Um, yes, Vanessa, you can absolutely, you can get these. Um, you just have to, you just have to sign up again with the, um, the, uh, the newsletter, not the newsletter, the, with the form that I'm going to attach. So if you go up to the very top of the comments and go to the link that I, um, put on here, it's called Creative Hustler. I'm trying to copy it, but it's not letting me copy it for some reason. But that's where you can sign up to get these for free, okay? Um, and if not, if you can't find it right now, then I'll link it again after the webinar is over in the comments for you, okay? So we're going to read Thunder Cake and we're going to read, um, we're going to go over main idea and details with the anchor chart. And we're going to talk about um, the table part, which is the main idea. And then the, the different legs are the details, okay? For writing, we're going to still use Thunder Cake and we're going to write a procedural story about how to make a Thunder Cake using first, then next, and last. Isn't that cake just adorable? Okay, so I have in the directions, you get um, one of these lesson plans every single day. So it's a, like a 10 day email sequence. So every single day, you get a different email. So the first day you'll get reading, the next day you'll get writing, the next day you'll get math, and so on, okay? And then for math, Speaking of math, um, the objective is I can count objects in group of, groups of 10 with some left over. So we're going to read What's the Place Value, which is a great book if you don't have that book. Um, and then we're going to do, um, we're going to talk about place value, how you can circle groups of 10 with some left over. And then they're going to write the how many raindrops were there. They're going to circle the, ten, the groups of 10 for the raindrops. And then they can glue that into their uh, math notebook. Okay. For science, um, they are going to learn all about rainbows. And guess what? The <laughs> rainbow craftivity that I was sharing with you earlier, that is in this, this free lesson plan, okay? So we're going to talk about different types of weather and which we're going to describe what weather creates a rainbow, okay? So then they're going to make this craftivity. Or if you want to just skip the freebies and you want to go all in and you want to get all of it because I have much more, you could have all of these engaging lessons already laid out for you in my membership, okay? Now, I know some of you that are commenting are already in my membership, okay? And I just finished these new curric uh, cross-curricular lesson plans today. So my goal is to upload it into the Kajabi portal for you guys this afternoon, okay? Now, if you sign up for my membership today, guess what? You get a free spring mentor text. So you can choose Thunder Cake. I will order it for you from Amazon. I will send it right to your door. Or you could order Sunshine Makes the Seasons or Rainbows or What's the Place Value? Any of these four books you can choose from if you get into my membership today. 
Um, and so I'm happy to do that for you so you can get started on your cross-curricular lesson plans. And so I wanna help you get started. I don't want you to be frustrated and be like, oh my gosh, I don't have that book. I don't have that book, I can't do that lesson. Well, if I can get it for you, okay? So if you want more, how about 48 lessons for spring? Okay, so if you wanna sign up for my free lesson plans, that's on my email list, okay? But if you want the 48 lessons for the whole unit, that's in my membership. These are exclusive lesson plans that are nowhere else, okay? I have put together a really great unit for you guys for spring, okay? So let's check this one out, okay? Hey, hey teacher, teacher friends. friends. This, this is Kara Griffin from Create Your Balance with Literacy. Are you ready to learn about spring with exclusive cross curricular lesson plans? These lesson plans include objectives, suggested menu tasks, anchor charts, skill cards, interactive notebooks, and writing activities. Let's take your classroom to the next level. For Reader's Workshop, the objectives are I can identify and write about main idea and details. For Writer's Workshop, the objective is I can write a procedural story using first, then, next, and last. For Math Workshop, the objectives are I can count objects in groups of 10 with some left over and compare numbers greater than less than. For Science, the objective is I can describe spring weather that makes a rainbow and different kinds of clouds. If you sign up today for my membership, you will get a free book for your classroom. You can choose any of these freebies. All these lesson plans are exclusively available in my cross curricular connections membership. Let's take your classroom to the next level. Until next time, bye bye. Okay, so like I said, so what is the cost? So I'm going to be very transparent with you guys. Um, I don't have anything to hide, and I'm going to be honest with you. So what is the cost? So level one, I have two different levels of the membership. Each level has unlimited access to all of my TPT products. Okay, I have 400 plus resources. 400 plus. Okay, so you can have a, any access to any of those. Now, if you're already on the membership, in the membership, all of the things that I've already shown you today in the webinar is already in there. It's already there for you, okay? Plus new webinars that are added each month. So if I'm giving a new webinar, I'm adding it to the, the membership. Um, plus new YouTube videos that I add each month, plus all the, the exclu exclusive lesson plans that I add each month. Plus my podcast, okay? So I have a podcast, if you don't know, Teaching Cross Curricular Made Easy that talks about all the different ways how I teach cross-curricular for different subjects. Um, and so for the level two, it is $15 a month. You Again, you have unlimited access to all my TPT products, all of my webinars, all my YouTube videos, all my exclusive lesson plans. Plus you have math and writer's workshop courses that I have already made, plus new ones added each year. So, and also one-to-one -one coaching calls as, as you need them. If you need a coaching call, then I'm glad to sit with you and talk with you about anything that you need. So if you need help with an observation lesson, I can help you with that. If you need help with finding good mentor text for a lesson, you need help with your T-test goal if you're a Texas teacher, if you need help with behavior management, um, organize organization in your classroom, setting up your systems in your classroom, I can help you with that. Okay, and um, the podcast is also in there. The best part is, is that I am adding a private Kajabi community where you can have all, we can have all the monthly coaching calls in the Kajabi community. So I'm in the process of converting that over and adding that to the membership as we speak. So we can have, we can have that to look forward to also. So um, that is what level two is. So level one is $10, level two is 15. Okay, so these are all the things that are inside of my membership. I have 58 back to school resources, a year long poetry bundle, 120 linking literature resources. Those are story companions. I have 23 math workshop resources, 47 science investigations, five author studies, including Kevin Hinks, Laura Numeroff, Patricia Polacco, Jan Brett, Tommy DePaula, and I'm working on Peter Reynolds right now. I have 20 writer's workshop resources. I have 19 
readers and readers theater resources, right, readers workshop theater, readers workshop resources, and all of my thematic units that are exclusive for the membership, including All About Me, Apples, Community Helpers, Christopher Columbus, Pumpkins, Owls, Bats, Scarecrows, Native Americans, Winter, Christmas Around the World, Penguins, Arctic Animals, Weather, Spring, Objects in the Sky, President, American Symbols, Texas, Rainforest, Insects, Plants, Life Cycles, Rocks and Fossils, and Ocean and Sea Life. And I have Farmhouse Decor if you're interested in that too. So all the webinars, um, I'm going to start um, probably in the summertime. I'm going to start giving exclusive webinars in the membership for you guys about specific different topics. Um, and so it might be about writer's workshop. It might be reader's workshop, math workshop, literacy centers. These are all the topics that I could give in my membership. I could teach about creative fun for back to school. Um, fairy tale writing, procedural writing, nonfiction writing, literature circles, behavior management, focus poetry, um, small group reading, Fahrenheit Friday, lots more, okay? So I'm going to be doing that in the summertime. And then these are my two courses that I have already written that I have um, in my membership. So from Scribbles to Stories is how to launch Writer's Workshop from day one. These are both six hours each. So if you complete each course, you get a six hour certificate because I am CPE certified and you can get a six hour certificate for completing each course. So that's 12 hours right there. Um, or I have the math workshop magic, which is empowering K2 mathematicians from l launching math workshop from day one. Okay. So these are super great. If you want to, if you're teaching first grade next year, if you already know you're teaching first grade next year, and you want to get a, get a hold of these courses, these are in my membership level two, and you will get started on writer's workshop and math workshop over the summer, okay? So the total value of all of these are $500, but you get the membership at 180, and you get a free book for your classroom. What a great deal. So like I said, level one is $10 a month, level two is $15 a month. After 14 days, if you're not satisfied, you get your money back guaranteed. Okay, guaranteed. Um, you do not have to keep this subscri subscription if you don't want to after 14 days. And you're like, yep, oh, this is not for me. I totally get it. Okay, so um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm going to go ahead and pick a third winner. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in my membership, there's a link in the comments at the very, very top. It's called, uh, it's a link called mykajabi.com membership subscription. So if you want to check that out, you can click on the link and it'll tell you some more information about it. So our third winner today is, let's see. Um, gosh, there's a lot of comments on here. Shannon White. Congratulations, Shannon. Okay, so Shannon White and Allison Sutton and May Sojourney are my three winners. I'm sorry if I butchered your last name, May. So <laughs> those three are my winners today. If you are interested in a certificate, like I said, I am CPE certified. And so I can send you a certificate today after the webinar is over with. Um, and so um, you can get an hour's worth of credit for today and I'll send it to you via Facebook Messenger. Okay, just make sure you tell me the full name that you want on your certificate. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, please invite your teacher friends to come in our Facebook group. I would love to have new teacher friends um, in our Facebook group and um, share this group with them. So if you have any questions about anything, from today's webinar, please comment in the questions and then I can answer you as soon as I can in the comments. So you guys have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the day and have a great week at school. And until next time, let's take your classroom to the next level. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.